In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to customize your Magic Move transitions. Let's start by selecting the transition here. You can edit the transition by either double-clicking this transition arrow or by clicking on the yellow Edit Transition button on the bottom here. So this is our transition editor, and you can see that this is a transition from the start scene to the end scene. And below that, there is a preview of the transition. On the bottom, there is a timeline editor that shows you exactly what happens during your transition. And right now, we're displaying time zero of the transition as indicated by the playhead here. You can actually drag the playhead around like this. You can also click on the play button here to preview the transition in real time. And if you option click the button, it will loop the animation until you press it again. Okay. Let's look at what happens at the bottom here. So the timeline editor has a big box titled Transition from Start Scene to End Scene. There's a lot of content in this box, but for now we'll just focus on this big box which represents your entire transition. If you select the box and change the duration in the inspector like this, it'll change the duration of your transition. If I play it now, you can see that it plays faster. You can also move the box around the timeline like this, resize it, or change its duration, like so. You can also scroll in the timeline, either with your touchpad, or by holding down the shift key and scrolling with your mouse. To zoom, perform the pinch to zoom gesture, or hold down the command key and scroll with your mouse. And we also have a very handy shortcut available, which is Option, Command, and Zero, that will fit content to your screen. Next, let's look at what happens during the transition. At the beginning, two layers are displayed, a blue layer called Profile and a red layer called Red Profile. And as a transition plays out, the red layer disappears and the blue layer morphs into a rectangle. Let me show you. And you can also see that four green layers appear during this transition. The timeline view shows what happens to all your layers. These boxes represent the layers you can see during the transition, and all these layers are divided into three distinct boxes. Those layers that appear during the transition, those that morph during the transition, and those that disappear during the transition. Now, let's talk about how drama decides whether a layer appears, disappears, or morphs during the transition. If drama finds a layer with the same name and of the same kind in both the start and end scene, it will morph the layer during the transition. If a layer can only be found on the start scene, it will disappear during the transition. And if a layer can only be found in the end scene, it will appear during the transition. Now that we know this, we can customize this transition. I'll zoom out and rearrange the boxes around like so. This will cause the disappear box to happen first, then the morph box, and finally the appear box. Let's play this. Okay. Right now the disappear transition is a bit boring because by default all the appear and disappear transitions are simple fade-ins or fade-outs. So let me show you how to customize this. I'll expand the red profile box here, and you can see what happens. There is an opacity transition associated with the red profile layer that starts at 100% and gradually becomes 0% as the transition progresses, and we can actually change this. So when I move the playhead here, I can set the opacity that this layer should have at this particular time. So I'll set it in the inspector to 71%. And you can see that the value here has also changed to 71%. You can also edit the value directly by double-clicking it and inputting a different value, like so. But this is still a simple fade-in. What if I wanted to add more attributes here? Fortunately, this is really easy to do. Let me show you how. I'll zoom this in a little bit. Okay. And I'll expand the rotation and scale box in the inspector, which will cause the rotation gizmo to appear in the workspace. I'll rotate this layer several times, like so, and now you can see a new attribute called Rotation Z has appeared here, which will go from 0 degrees to over 1000 degrees. And I can already play this. Okay, 
but I also want this layer to actually go outside the scene during the transition. So I'll grab it and move it here. Make sure you've correctly set the time here, and maybe I also want to change the scale of the layer to something like 7%. Now I'll make this a bit larger and show you how it all looks. Well, it kind of looks like a balloon deflating. <laughs> Let's look at the contents of the morph box here. Only one layer, the profile layer, is undergoing morphing. Let's look at the contents of the morph box here. Only one layer, the profile layer, is undergoing morphing. So I'll expand the box, and you can see that five different attributes are affected by the morphing. This was generated automatically by Drama. You can select and move the individual attributes around the timeline. You can also change the duration like so if you wish. But as I don't want to use that in this document, I'll put that back. Okay. If you select this area between the start and end values, you can see there is a timing function here in the inspector that you can change. The timing function describes what happens to the value during the animation. You can change this to some other, more complicated timing function. But I'll skip that for now, because we have another tutorial targeted at animations and timing functions you can check out. Just remember that this option is available when you need it. Finally, I'd also like to customize this appear transition of those green rectangles. I'll first collapse these to make more space so we can see this better. Now you can see those four green rectangles appearing during this transition using a simple fade-in animation. But this is a bit boring, so instead, I'd like them to enter from the left side of the scene as this transition happens. To do that, let's select the layers and move the playhead to the start of the appear transition. Now I'll move these layers to the left, like this. And now when I play it, you can see that the green layers come from the left. To finish this, I'll offset them in the timeline a bit, like so, and play the whole transition. And now, they'll come one by one. Okay. Now, let's exit the Transition Editor and preview this in the simulator. It works pretty well. If you want to learn more about animations, you can check out our Scene Animations tutorial. Thanks for watching.